everybody, welcome to this month of Staffing Monthly, where we are taking a deep dive into the recruiting quadrants. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, definitely go back and watch the first video in this issue where I break down what the recruiting quadrants is. It's not that long of a video. It's a quick run through just to give you an idea, but essentially it breaks down the different quadrants that you should be focused on optimizing to, to maximize your candidate flow, right? One of those quadrants that we focus heavily on is the employee referral program. As you know, I came out in January and said, this is the year of the referral because we've seen job ad costs go way up. Available candidates has not followed suit. So we have to look for other better ways to get more candidates into our pipeline. If you look at the most recent state of staffing report, you can actually see that still year in and year out, the number one way that candidates are finding their next job is through referrals. Yet it's not the most often used way that staffing agencies are actually finding their candidates. We over rely on job boards and that is it's a dangerous spot to put our business. You have to be focused on having a strong employee referral program as well, but you can't just rely on the old fashioned, hey, if you refer a friend, I'll pay you 50 bucks. It doesn't work that way anymore. And there's some proven ways to really do the referral program the right way. There's some well-known companies out there that have actually gone on record and said that the way they've built their referral framework is now producing the, this their leading source of placed candidates. In addition to that, they're also getting better quality candidates, meaning their placements are actually getting placed quicker and they're lasting longer on assignment. So if you are an agency out there and you've been wondering how do you actually get more candidates, a higher quality candidate, how to fill job orders faster, and how to actually keep, you know, keep your employees on contract or on assignment longer, the answer might just be, your employee referral program, which is why I actually am setting this up. I want you to watch the webinar that was recorded by Staffing Referrals. This is about the referral framework and what they're gonna walk through are the three things that you absolutely need in place to build a successful candidate referral program, okay? These are, these are huge. This is the foundation, right? The old adage goes, focus on the root, not the fruit. If we actually focus on a strong root system, a strong foundation, the fruit will follow, right? So pay attention to this actually, this, this next webinar explaining the referral framework because this is exactly how you're gonna optimize this quadrant of the recruitment quadrants. So enjoy. Uh, registrations for our webinar today, which is really awesome to see. Um, excited to have this conversation with you today. Today, we're gonna be talking about the referral framework and three things that you need to build a successful candidate referral program. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items to kick us off. One, uh, if you have any questions, we have a Q&A. Uh, we will be monitoring that throughout the webinar and we'll be answering questions at the end. Uh, two, if you miss anything, don't worry too much. Uh, or if you want the slides, we are gonna be sending a recording of this out at the end. Uh, so you will be able to go back and watch and learn anything that you would like from the, the platform, from the webinar today. Um, and then lastly, thank you all for joining uh, and thank you for signing up. It's always exciting for us to get to talk to staffing referrals of professionals uh, and kind of share best practices and share things we've learned over the years. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off. So a little bit about staffing referrals to start. Um, so staffing referrals partners with a little over a hundred agencies and we've helped generate over one and a half million brand ambassadors with the industry's leading automated referral management platform. You'll notice by the logos here, we work across all industry verticals, uh, except for exec search, uh, but light industrial IT, healthcare, niche staffing, uh, we work across all of those. If you're trying to get more referrals, we can help. Uh, secondly, we are the only referral software that is 100% focused on the staffing industry. Uh, we've had over, we've got over 15 integrations. We've been building the platform for over six years, and we are the number one referral software for agencies based off of market share, and we'd argue also based off of quality and uh, uh, how we perform as well. Um, on the right, you'll notice we have a few integrations that we've listed. Uh, we're always looking to build new ones uh, with ATSs and always refine the ones that we have. With that, we're going to go ahead and jump into introductions. So I am David Falwell. I'm the founder and president of Staffing Referrals. Um, I've also co-founded an award-winning marketing agency. I'm a huge tech enthusiast and nerd, always trying the latest software. Uh, also an ultra marathoner. I uh, love to get out on the trail. I am not fast, uh, but I do like to get out and get miles underneath my feet. 
With that, I'm going to pass it over to Krista to do a quick introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm the head of customer education here at Staffing Referrals, also managing editor at Staffing Hub. I was uh, the other co-founder of that marketing agency with David, and um, I'm a competitive bridge player and a theater reviewer here in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Awesome. So with that, uh, one thing I wanted you all to know is that this is the first webinar in a webinar series about referrals. Today, we're going to be talking about the referral framework, which is really the foundation for make, having success with your referral program. On March 30th, we'll have the second installment where we'll be talking about how you can build a referral culture at your staffing agency, which is one of the core components to having success with referrals. And then finally, on April 6th, we will be going into the automation and the software side of it and talking about how you can turn your talent pool into commission-only recruiters. The agenda for today. So Chris is going to be taking over here in a second and talking about why referrals matter to staffing agencies now more than ever. Uh, then we're going to talk about the three components of a successful referral program and how to implement them in your agency. Uh, and then finally, I'll take over and talk about some of the best practices for building a candidate referral program. With that, I will pass it over to Krista to talk about how candidates are hard to find. All right. Thanks, David. So as you probably all know, uh, the unemployment rate is currently at about 3.4%, which is a near historic low. And despite all the mass layoffs we're hearing about in the news, there are 1.9 open jobs for every employed person. In addition, we are seeing a lot of job hopping. I don't know about you, but it seems like every other week I read a new survey showing that a large percentage of people either quit their jobs in the last six months or are planning to quit their jobs in the next six months. And the current reality is simply that candidates are hard to find and employees are hard to keep. And there's no indication that that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, just to further illustrate that point, uh, you may be familiar with the state of, uh, Staffing Hub State of Staffing Report. This is an industry benchmarking report that we put out every year. Right now, we're in the process of producing the 2023 report, so keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. But I have a few sneak peeks for you. Uh, this is one of them. Every year, we ask respondents about the single biggest challenge their agency is facing. And this is a word cloud of our current responses. I pretty much think it speaks for itself, right? The words that really stick out here are finding candidates. So we see two main issues that are getting in the way of staffing agencies meeting their goals to find candidates. The first is that agencies are by and large all fishing in the same pond and it's not even the right pond. What this means is that everyone is using the same job boards to compete for the same candidates. But in fact, the best candidates aren't even on job boards. I have a lot of data to support this, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. And the second issue is that candidates today have much different expectations of what the hiring process looks like compared to five or 10 years ago. You may have heard the word consumerization being applied to employment. Workers, especially younger workers, are approaching job search the same way they approach purchasing something online. They expect a highly personalized, seamless, omni-channel experience. And if there's any friction, they'll simply go somewhere else, which is really easy to do when there's so many more jobs available than people to do them. So let's dig in. First, agencies are all fishing from the same pool, of, same pool of talent. That's because they're all using the same tools, namely job boards. So just I'd like to do a very quick poll here about, um, oh, my, I will skip that. I apologize, my poll has disappeared. Uh, <laughs> Basically, it was a poll just asking me how many people are using job boards and expecting that we'd have a, a pretty high, uh, pretty high percentage in the room. Um, go on. Thanks, David. Uh, so for a 2022 staffing, state of staffing benchmarking report, agencies said that they spent an average about of $112,000 every year on job boards. And agencies in the engineering, industrial, and IT verticals spent considerably more than that. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of our upcoming data here as well. The analysis isn't final, but what it's looking like is that av average job board spend has roughly doubled and is now over $200,000. Basically, that means that agencies right now are spending more than $200,000 a year on the same job boards where the competition is also spending more than $2,000 a year. That's a lot of money to buy access to the same talent that everyone else is. 
And of course, job boards are getting more expensive. Uh, data from AppCast showed that in 2021, the median cost per job posting increased 43%, but the median apply rate only went up 3%. So what that means is agencies are spending a lot more money, but it isn't necessarily translating into more applicants. Now there's an additional complicating factor, which is that almost three quarters of candidates aren't looking on job boards because they're passive seekers. So all that time, effort, and money that agencies are putting into job boards isn't even helping them reach the majority of candidates that are out there. Here's uh, some additional data to support that claim. Uh, last year, we asked almost 600 people where they found their current job, and only 6% said job boards. The largest single source where people found their job was a referral from a friend or colleague at 24%. And just another small sneak peek, uh, we have asked the same question this year and that referral number has gone up to 28%. So also just a little bit more about how the candidate experience is changing. So in the past, candidates had to compete for jobs. Today, jobs have to compete for candidates. And all those candidates are expecting a consumer grade experience. This slide shows some recent data about that. 66% of temporary and contract workers have abandoned a job search because the recruitment process took too long. 55% of job seekers who have read a negative review have decided against applying for a position at that company. And the percentage of candidates who would apply to a company again is decreasing, while the candidate, candidate resentment is increasing. And here, resentment means candidates who say that they will never do anything again with an employer because they've had a poor candidate experience. So what makes a great candidate experience? I love this quote from Andre Maletti. He's a project ev product evangelist at Bullhorn because it sums up what candidates are looking for. I'm gonna read you a slightly longer version of this quote. This is from an article on Staffing Hub and I'd be happy to send that over afterward to anyone who's interested. Here's the quote. Enjoying a consumer grade experience throughout the entire hiring journey has become just as important as the work itself. Talent abandon job applications and interviews at the same rate they abandon online shopping carts in search of a better deal or faster shipping. They apply to numerous jobs in the time it took earlier generations to find and apply to one. So if you don't invest in a mix of modern digital marketing, recruitment, and user experience best practices, you'll have a hard time attracting, engaging, and retaining digitally native talent. If the job application process is not as easy as scrolling through Instagram, you will lose. So candidates are hard to find and they have very high expectations for the job search experience. In these circumstances, the old way of posting jobs on job boards and then waiting for candidates to apply simply doesn't work anymore. And that's why referrals matter. And this isn't just our opinion. I'm gonna show you some data that back this up. So this is data from the staffing referral system, which shows that the average placement rate for referrals is 16%. That compares to the 1% that's typical from job boards. This means that referral leads are 16 times more likely to get placed than leads from job boards. Uh, referral leads are also up to 55% faster to hire than leads from job boards and career sites. Referral hires stay in a position as much as 70% longer than non-referral hires, and referrals can save companies about $3,000 or more per hire. Now, this is also a bit of anecdata, but we heard from a staffing referrals customer recently that 90% of the referral candidates they placed last year stayed past their assignment. What makes referrals work and what makes them so different from job boards is that instead of fishing in the same pond as everyone else, referrals allow you to create a privately curated candidate pool that centers around the people who know you and who have had a great experience with your agency. Just to illustrate this, imagine you have 100 contractors currently out on assignment and each of those people has 338 Facebook friends, which is the current average. By having those contractors share your referral program on Facebook, you could reach a potential of 33,800 candidates. And these candidates are entirely unique to you. No other agency has that exact same pool. And of course, this is just Facebook, so not even a full representation of an individual's digital network. So we'd like to talk about this as a new, uh, new sourcing strategy, your referral sourcing strategy. And what it looks like is it focuses on referrals, not just job boards, 
It uses social media to reach your current talent's digital network, and it automates the whole process rather than relying on cold calls and other one-off outreach. And these are the kind of results that uh, you could get from this uh, new strategy. This is a quote uh, from Stephen Koch, who's a Koch, who is the former director of innovation at Higher Dynamics, which has since been purchased by EmployBridge. He said, the, year, the results year to date, referrals are now our top source of hires. Yes, that's right. There's no single source that has provided us more hires this year. He also told us that in the first six months of launching with staffing referrals, Higher Dynamics saw a 200% increase in referrals from the previous year. And for the first time in the company's 20 year history, they received more placements from referrals than they did from all of the job boards. So hopefully by now you're convinced of the importance of referrals and are starting to think about the impact they could have on your business. So the next question is, how do you do it? After implementing hundreds of successful referral programs across industries like David mentioned, we've learned that there are really three things that make an organization successful with referrals. We've developed a framework that any agency can follow to build and scale their program. And here it is, the three parts of the referral framework. They are culture, this is the most important thing. You need to have a referral culture. We break this down into two components. First, the external part, you have to be referable so that people actually want to refer their friends and colleagues to work with your agency. And second is internal. Referrals need to be prioritized across your organization. We're gonna talk a little bit about this today, but the second webinar in this series is gonna focus entirely on referral culture. The second part of the framework is your referral program. This is the structure that includes you know, how much of a bonus you'll offer, your terms and conditions for paying out those bonuses. And finally, you need a referral process, which is the everyday work that your team does to keep the referrals coming in. You put those three things together and you will get more placements. Okay, so we're gonna start with the referral culture because it's the most important piece of the puzzle. And like I mentioned, there are two components to this. First, you have to be refer referable so people want to bring their friends and colleagues to work with you. And second, you need to prioritize referrals across all levels of your organization. We'll start with uh, the external factor here, which is being referable. So just for a minute, please think about a company or a product you referred to someone in your network and why you referred them. I'm gonna share a few examples from my life. Uh, I love Gold Belly. This is a website where you can order food from across the country and deliver it to your door. And when we couldn't travel because of COVID, I used Gold Belly a lot. I ordered pizza from Chicago, barbecue from Texas, meal kits from restaurants all over the place. Now, I referred Gold Belly to several of my foodie friends because I thought it was really fun and I knew they would enjoy it as well. And because I love fun food, I also like to get regular exercise. So my best pandemic purchase was a mirror. Uh, you may have seen uh, advertisements for these, but it's basically a full length mirror that's also a screen where you can get workouts live and on demand. I use my mirror several times a week and I will happily talk about it to anyone looking for a convenient, easy to stick with fitness program. So you may have noticed here that when I talked about these products, I didn't mention getting a referral bonus. Both of them do have referral programs and I have received bonuses for them, but that wasn't the driving force behind my referrals. These products have made my life better and I like sharing them with other people who might be looking for the same thing. Now this gets to something that we find is often a source of misunderstanding about candidate referral programs, which is the idea that it's all about the money. In fact, for most candidates, Making a referral is more about helping a friend than it is about earning the money. Now, the extra money is nice, right? And research shows that you do need an incentive for your referral program to perform at a high level. It can't be all you're offering. So why do people refer their friends for jobs? There are four main reasons. One, they've had a really good experience with a company or agency. They like their recruiter. They want to help their friends and coworkers. And they want to participate in their community. If you bring it back to the examples I shared, I referred friends to Mirror and Goldbelly because I love their products and I wanted to share something I loved with my friends. It really is that simple. Of course, people also like referral bonuses, but the psychological factors have to be in place first because there's also a measure of risk in referring a friend to someone. Like what if it doesn't work out? If I refer my friend for a job, what if they don't get hired? Or what if they do get hired and they hate it? This could reflect badly on me as the person who made the referral. There was a really interesting study recently that looked at how people felt about their company 
and how likely they were to refer a friend for a job at that company to earn different bonus amounts. Now, this is a very simplistic illustration of the results. But in general terms, what they found is that if people feel like making a referral is risky, then the company has to give out very large bonuses to get those referrals. On the flip side, when people feel a positive emotional attachment to the company, then very large bonuses aren't necessary. They would get the same number of referrals for a smaller bonus. So the bottom line here is that your referral culture is more important than your referral bonus. You can buy referrals, but it will be very, very expensive. Okay, so are you referable? <laughs> a good measure of that is actually to look at how many referrals you're currently getting. What percentage of your candidates currently come in from referrals? In our experience, a surprising number of agencies don't actually know the contribution of referrals to their business, and it's usually because they don't have a tracking system in place. And in the third webinar, stay tuned because we're going to go over how automated referral management can help with this. There are a few more metrics that you can use to judge your referability. Uh, one of our favorites is the Net Promoter Score, or MPS. We believe this is a very important metric, and I'll be going over it in more detail in the second webinar. Uh, but there are also a few others. What's your redeployment rate? I heard a statistic recently that just about 6% of staffing agencies are even measuring their redeployment rate, which is pretty astonishing because those people who will come back and work another assignment with you are like gold, right? They're also the ones who are most likely to refer you to their friends. Of course, there are also online reviews. Just like any other business, staffing agencies are being reviewed all of the time online, whether it's on a general platform like Google Reviews or Yelp, or an employment platform like Glassdoor, or a staffing specific tool like Great Recruiters or Clearly Rated. People who have worked with you are talking about you, and it's in your best interest to know what they're saying. Because according to Glassdoor, the average job seeker reads six reviews, and 69% won't accept a job from a company with a bad reputation. So like I said, we're gonna dig in a lot more into referability in the next webinar series. So if you're looking at this and thinking, oh dear, we don't measure any of these things, uh, you're gonna to wanna to sign up for that. So now we'll go to the second part of the referral culture, which is how you ref incorporate referrals into your organization. Basically what we found is that companies that are most successful are the ones where referrals are baked into their internal culture at all levels. They're championed by the leadership, they're tracked by managers, and they're prioritized by recruiters. I'm just gonna show you uh, briefly what that looks like at each level. So on the leadership level, championing, championing referrals looks like this. You talk about the importance of your referrals consistently. You actively promote your referral program, not just have something that's out there that no one knows about, but actively promote it. You understand your current data around referrals and your lead source numbers so you can set goals and uh, figure out how to grow them. And you're excited to pay referral bonuses. On the management level, managers need to track the referrals. This includes using a defined process to ensure that referral leads are giving special uh, attention, uh, training recruiters on how to incorporate the referral program into daily conversations, and David's going to get into this a little more in the best practices section. You track and review your referrals with your recruiters regularly, and you ensure bonuses are paid out on time. This is very important for the trust and transparency with your network. And finally, at the recruiter level, prioritizing referrals means promoting the referral program in the email signatures and on social media means talking about the referral program with all the candidates you interview in place. It means calling referral leads as quickly as possible after they come in. We talk about it as like giving them the white glove treatment and thanking your ambassadors when they send referrals to keep nurturing those relationships. For a lot of agencies, uh, putting this in place requires change management, which honestly can be the most challenging part. But we've seen that once people start to see those placements roll in, they get excited, they get engaged, and that's when things really start to take off. So I'm gonna give you an example of an agency that is really doing it right. Uh, Seek Careers, they love to pay referral bonuses because they know the exact value every one of those bonuses brings to their organization. In just a little over a year with staffing referrals, Seek got over 1,500 referral leads and they converted 33% of those leads into placements. So this is a quote from Sarah Lepsinger, who is Seek's Vice President of Organizational Development. She said, 
So far, we've paid out $91,000 in referral bonuses and made $350,000 in gross margin on those placements. That means we've made nearly three times our investment in those referral leads. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the second main component of the referral network, which is the referral program itself. What we found is that the most impactful referral programs, we keep it simple and easy to understand for the recruiters, the ambassadors, and the candidates. Here we're gonna go over some essentials, some ways you can level up, and then a few things to avoid. So essentials. Uh, you, we recommend that you give a minimum of a $100 referral bonus, regardless of your vertical. And we talked about how money isn't the most important motivator, but it is definitely a motivator. And from our data, we found that $100 is about the minimum incentive to drive success. Uh, you standardize your terms and conditions across your organization. This isn't always easy, especially for agencies that work in different verticals or have jobs with vastly different margins. But we recommend standardizing your bonuses as much as possible because that makes it easier for your recruiters to get out there and promote the program. Use terms and conditions that are easy to understand. Promote your program across all of the channels where you communicate with your talent and communicate about when bonuses will be paid. Like I said, this is part of trust and transparency. It's very important. When you're ready to level up and you say, hey, we've got all that in place, here are a couple ideas for you. Uh, first, use dual-sided bonuses to increase sharing. So most agencies offer a single-sided bonus where just the ambassador gets the bonus. A dual-sided referral program is the type popularized by Uber and Airbnb where both the ambassador and their friend gets the bonus. So in staffing, this means you give a bonus both to the ambassador and to the candidate that they send your way. And we highly recommend this. First, it's the kind of program people are used to seeing on the consumer side, so it fits in with that consumerization concept. And also it helps build trust because ambassadors actually feel like they're giving their friends a gift rather than just making a referral so that they can get their own bonus. Uh, one customer recently told me that switching from single-sided to the dual-sided bonus was their aha moment for referrals. And it was the thing that really started driving a lot more leads. Uh, you can also you know, make it fun, introduce some competition, have quarterly contests for recruiters and ambassadors. This is part of you know, an advanced promotion of your program. And we also recommend that you promote how much you're paying in bonuses. This shows your commitment to referrals and can further incentivize your ambassadors. I just wanna talk quickly about a couple things to avoid in your referral program. First, uh, setting bonuses that are not motivating or profitable. It's really important to coordinate with your accounting team to de determine exactly when a placement becomes profitable. Is it 30 days or 90 days? This gives you the information you need to set bonuses that you'll actually be excited and happy about paying. Uh, avoid creating overcomplicated referral programs. For example, uh, bonuses earned per hour or a tiered bonus with too many steps. These can be confusing for people to understand. So when possible, we recommend a single flat bonus. And also having overly lengthy payout terms, right? It shouldn't take a year to earn a referral bonus. And it's best to pay bonuses as close to when the referral is made as possible. So if you have a 30-day work commitment, for example, you know, strive to pay out that bonus on day 31 or as close as you can get to that mark. And uh, this is just a little bit more about referral bonus amounts. This graph shows the average bonuses paid through the staffing referral system. As you can see, it really varies widely by the industry, but we highly recommend you set your bonus to match or slightly beat the industry average. And we have an ebook on referrals that has this data and a lot more data on referral bonuses. So uh, we can send that to you afterward if you're interested in seeing what that would look like for your vertical. Okay, finally, we're gonna turn to the process of how you implement the referral program. And these are all the things that your team does to keep those referrals coming in. So uh, agencies that get the most referrals are the ones that have a standardized processes across the organization to handle those. So again, we have some essentials, a level up, and then a few things to avoid. So the, there are four essentials that uh, are the most important things to put in place. One, provide training on your referral pro process so that everyone knows how to do it and everyone's doing it the same way. Uh, standardize your talk tracks so that your recruiters are constantly out there promoting about the program. Use tools to track your referrals. I mean, this can be a spreadsheet. It can be automated referral management. The important thing is you have something, uh, you have something to track it so you know where your referrals are in the process. 
and have a defined bonus payout process as well. So once you have your program in place and define processes around it, you can take this up a notch by automating it with digital tools. Our entire third webinar in this series will be devoted to this, but here are just a few examples of what digital tools can do for you. They can provide unique links for your talent to spread the word, so it's really easy for them to shoot it out on social media or in text. They can uh, do auto-qualification processes with interview scheduling. So, you know, imagine your recruiters log in in the morning to find interviews with qualified talent already on your calendar. It's a dream, right? Um, you can also integrate automated referral management software with your ATS, so a lot of these things can just happen behind the scenes. And finally, a few things to avoid in the process. Um, failing to build the relationships with your top ambassadors. This does go back to culture, but those relationships are really paramount. And what we've heard from a lot of agencies is that referrals really follow the 80-20 rule. You'll get 80% of your best referrals from 20% of your ambassadors. So you can do a lot of things to continue to deepen those relationships. A uh, big mistake is missing communications when referral bonuses are paid. This is really important uh, so that, you know, your ambassadors aren't frustrated. And they're not calling your recruiters saying, hey, where the heck is my bonus? Those communications are, are crucial. And also treating bonuses like self-employment income for ambassadors on payroll. Um, we have an article about this on our blog, so I'm going to point you over there. But I recently interviewed a staffing tax expert about the best way to handle bonuses. And he said that a lot of agencies like to treat them as self-employment income. While this may be easier for the agency, it's not the right way to do it, and it also isn't the best for ambassadors. So uh, if you have any questions about that, we'd be happy to point you to the blog article and the tax expert advice. Okay, so just a very brief review of the referral framework. I know that was a lot, um, but the three pillars, create a referral culture by focusing on the candidate experience and making referrals a strategic priority in your organization. Make your referral program simple and easy to understand and develop processes around referrals are handled. And now I'm gonna pass it back over to David to go over some more best practices. Thank you so much, Krista. That was super insightful. I hope that was good for all of you that are listening in. Um, that's taken years to kind of understand uh, what the framework looks like and how to make sure uh, we are providing the best practices here. But I hope that the, those are things that you can take uh, and take action on within your agency to drive more referrals. Um, now I'm gonna jump into just some quick hits on best practices that we've learned uh, that tie back to the framework, but we'll go ahead and jump in here. So number one, this is pretty straightforward, but make sure that you know your audience. If you're working with travel nurses uh, versus light industrial or construction workers, or maybe um, specialized engineers, the messaging should be different. The way you communicate it, about it should be different. Where we find is the agencies that have the most success with their referral program, they're really thinking about what does the audience that I'm talking to care about? What does the talent care about? How should I communicate with them? When should I communicate with them? What does the messaging and voice sound like? So something to think about across the board with a, just having a deep understanding of who you're talking to. Uh, another key component here is investigating the competition. Uh, highly recommend that you go out and throughout the next conference, start asking people <clears throat> what percentage of their placements come from referrals and start trying to identify who's figured this out, who's doing really well with referrals and start asking how they've structured their program. So they're direct competition, obviously they're not gonna tell you, but if you're at a conference like Exec Forum, which we will be at next week in Miami, uh, maybe you can talk to somebody who's in a different industry vertical and figure out who's the best in another vertical where they don't mind sharing some of the tidbits. What I can tell you having worked across all the verticals is that a lot of these specific tactics they apply across every industry. Um, so start understanding what's, what other people are doing, what's working. Uh, Krista mentioned this earlier in terms of match or beat your competitors' incentives. That's a baseline recommendation. What I would also say is Krista showed that chart on how much you need to pay based off your brand reputation. If you happen to have a 95 NPS and you're winning every clearly rated and great recruiters award, you might be able to pay significantly less than your competitors' incentives. So don't make it all about the compensation but do make sure that you're offering something that your candidates feel good about and something that feels fair from their perspective. Um, also think about identifying reasons beyond the bonus that people might refer. Uh, we have some agencies that have, we've worked with for years that they, they do the, the standard gift card bonus, which we recommend, but then they also layer in quarterly competitions where they have travel giveaways um, and they really 
you know, let the ambassadors stand out and have leaderboards where they show everybody who's, who's winning and talk, like send out emails to talk about which ambassadors are doing best. So start thinking about it even broader and look at what the, the people that are winning with referrals are doing. Uh, again, this is a very basic one, but set smart goals. Make sure your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Uh, I cannot tell you how many agencies we talk to who are like, yeah, we love referrals. We know they're a huge part of our business and we know there's more there. And then ask, well, what's your goal for referrals this year? And they kind of, you know, deer in headlights. They don't actually have a specific goal around that. It is critical to make sure that you are setting goals on what you want to achieve with your referrals. You know, what gets measured gets done. Um, this should be something at the leadership level where everybody's talking about, hey, how do we, how do we reduce? Every, nobody likes spending money on job boards these days. Nobody likes the cost increasing over there. We're all frustrated with it. One, this is something that you can do with or without our software. You can start setting goals to drive more of your talent, your placements from referrals. Um, we've got a couple examples of smart goals below here. The one way I would say is that most agencies we work with, they come to us and say they're anywhere from 10% of their placements come from referrals all the way up to, I think we have one company that's in like the 60% of their placements are coming from referrals in the travel nursing sector. And what we say is when they come work with us, we know that by implementing our software, you're gonna see a lift of about 20% all the way up to 250% depending on your reputation in the first year of using our software. So you can set pretty meaningful goals off that where say it's, I'm at 10% right now, 10% of my placements come from referrals. I'm gonna implement staffing referrals. At the end of the year, I'm gonna be somewhere between 12% and all the way up to two, uh, 25% of my placements coming from referrals. Um, if you're doing this on your own, just think about something that's achievable and start small and start chipping away at it and making sure that you're, you're having these conversations. Krista talked about this a little bit earlier as well. One thing I think is absolutely critical is getting buy-in from your recruiters on the importance of referrals. Take a moment and talk about the why behind referrals with your recruiters. If your recruiters understand that referrals are going to get to work faster, that they're going to have to call less people to get that placement in, uh, on, on assignment, that referrals literally will make them make more money, they will start focusing on referrals. I don't think a lot of recruiters understand that if I get a referral to go to work, they might do two or three assignments versus the one assignment. And I, instead of calling 100 people, maybe I only have to call 15 people. So it really can reduce their workload and increase their profitability which in turn will drive the profitability and the revenue for your agency. Um, I would also recommend, and this is a, a easy thing to implement from my perspective at least, is setting specific goals on the recruiter level. So if you're having weekly calls with your recruiters in terms of their performance, don't just talk about, hey, did you hit your numbers? Okay, that's great. Did you get your, you know, what's your time to hire? Use those metrics and continue to use those metrics, but start measuring them on the actual referral placements. Say if John last month hit five referrals, maybe this month his goal is to hit six. Meanwhile, your top referrer, maybe you got 15 referral placements last month and you wanna get him to 18. Start having them setting specific goals on the recruiter level and then having them share their stories. So the people that are having success with their referrals, make sure that you're highlighting their success and having them share their stories with other recruiters so that you can build this culture deep into your organization. Additionally, make sharing easy. So it's important that you describe the referral process clearly and succinctly. Uh, we recommend doing this on your website and in email messaging. Um, also provide a unique link to brand ambassadors so that they can share beyond traditional word of mouth. Um, additionally, we recommend consistently inviting new ambassadors into the program. Everybody that gets placed with your organization should probably get an invite to be a brand ambassador and to refer people to your org. Additionally, we talked about rewards a little bit just in terms of the overall bonus amounts. Um, one thing that could be really impactful is making sure that you are giving the right rewards to your audience. What most companies that do with us in terms of success, the number one uh, way to pay out rewards is through payroll. Second would be gift cards. What we are seeing within our platform is that the most successful organizations are actually using gift cards. The reason that we believe this is the case is that by paying through a gift card, you are actually uh, incentivizing, you're tying the referral to a reward that they will remember. Uh, and the, the example that I always talk about with this is if I were to refer my friend to a, uh, your agency, they get placed on assignment, they make it through the 100 hours or three months, whatever it is that the requirements are, and then I get that bonus, say it's a $100 bonus two months from now, it goes onto my uh, payroll, I may not notice the $100 if I, unless I have a message about it, 
and it might just go straight to bills just like everything else in my payroll does. Now, if I get a gift card from you, I'm going to have the gift card. I'm going to have to use it on something like an experience or a gift or you know, maybe a, something off Amazon. By getting the gift card, you are tying that action to the referral and you're going to in turn get more referrals from your audience. Um, one thing here, though, to keep in mind is like, keep think about what your audience wants. You can ask your uh, candidates what type of uh, awards they would like, potentially do quarterly giveaways or quarterly drawings outside of this traditional rewards, uh, but really focus on giving the rewards that your candidates want. Also promote across all channels. Um, pretty straightforward here, but using social media, email and SMS, um, we highly recommend again that everybody that goes on assignment should get an email about the referral program. They should get a text about the referral program. We hear that recruiters sometimes aren't even having conversations uh, with candidates that go on assignment. That's all happening over email and text and through the web. When that's happening, you need to make sure that you are promoting the referral program outside of the recruiter conversations. Um, you also should include uh, recruiter talk tracks. Uh, and this doesn't need to be formalized to the point that your recruiters sound like robots, but your recruiters should know, here are the moments when I should ask for a referral. For example, we have a lot of our customers that have told us that one of the best times to ask for a referral is actually when you interview somebody and they say they are not interested in the position. So, uh, you know, I, I am on the interview and I'm like, oh, I'm not interested right now. That's a perfect time for your recruiter to say, all right, I completely understand. Um, if you happen to know anybody, there's a link in my signature and you could, you could earn an extra $500 by referring them in. I hope you have a great day. It's a casual, non-intrusive way to ask for a referral at a point where a candidate is saying no to you. We have some recruiters that have driven multiple placements by using that tactic. Additionally, be transparent with your referral program. Uh, you don't want your referrals to feel like the resume black hole. If I'm sending an email in and referring my friend, and I never hear back and I have no way of tracking the progress, the likelihood of me submitting another referral is pretty low. What we've heard through multiple conversations with ambassadors, specifically at TravCon, is that these travel nurses will say, I referred my friend to this agency. Six months later, I found out my friend was working there. I reach out to the agency to get my referral bonus. They say they have no record of the referral at all. And because of that, not only do I not trust this agency, I'm never referring anybody to them, and I'm also going to talk badly about them. So you have to think about your referral program and having transparency into the tracking progress. Tracking of the referrals is more, it's delivering a better candidate experience, but it's also creating a better reputation for your organization and making sure you will continue to get referrals. Um, we also recommend that you identify and share ineligible referral applicants directly with your brand ambassadors. So if you think about, I referred my friend then, if I don't hear what happened or the outcome or have a way to see the outcome of that referral, there's no closed loop. I just submitted a referral and I don't really know what happens. I have to reach out to my friend to find out. It's not really the best experience. And what we recommend is that you close the loop. If somebody's not a good fit, reach out, have the, the respect to close the loop and say, hey, thank you so much for that referral. Turns out this wasn't the right fit. But if you know anybody that has these skill sets, we'd love to talk with them. Keep these relationships open because these are effectively commission only recruiters that are out there working on your behalf. Also, uh, this is a big one that everybody on this call should be thinking about. Um, I think this is going to change and every agency will be doing this within the next two to three years is allow anyone to refer to your organization. The historical old way of doing referrals was that we only allow people on contract or only people on payroll to refer to us. Why wouldn't you want somebody who has a good candidate for your agency to refer them to you. It's again, the term commission only recruiter. You've got somebody who's willing to give you candidates that are a good fit and you're only paying for it when you are profitable because you're setting the terms based off the hours or the week's work to make sure you're profitable on the referral. So allow anyone to refer into your organization, whether it's a friend, a colleague. Um, we have one example of a travel nurse blogger who is actually uh, using our links as almost like an affiliate program where he's referring people to multiple organizations without use our software. So really expand your reach, expand your effort, um, and think about uh, allowing more people to refer in. Um, just another example here, we also have another uh, agency that we work with that has reached out to nonprofits within their community and has allowed those nonprofits to refer people in for light industrial roles and said, hey, for every person you refer that gets placed, We'll donate to your charity. So just think about a little bit broader. Go beyond the, the scope of just 
paying people that are on payroll. So we are finishing up the, the webinar now and I'm excited to share a little something for you. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was see if we could offer something for anybody that made it through this webinar. One, I hope you got a ton of insights and that are actionable that you can go back to work with and use today. Um, I also wanted to share that we are offering the first three people who submitted demo request today will get a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, we'll send out a gift card using the tool that your candidates would be getting gift cards through. So you get a little bit of the preview into the candidate experience. We'll also be waiving the implementation and training fee, which is a $2,400 fee. And that will be free for the first three demo requests that come through. Um, to uh, request a demo, you can either scan this QR code on the right or visit staffingreferrals.com slash grow. Um, the next three demo requests that come through, we're gonna get an extra three hours uh, for 13 hours total of referral culture consulting, consulting included with the platform. Uh, we always include 10 hours of referral culture consulting because we know how important that is, uh, but we are gonna include three extra hours for anybody that, uh, that is in the next three demo requests. And then lastly, anybody that requests a demo within the next hour, we are gonna offer one free hour of referral culture consulting uh, without having to purchase the platform. So we can kind of dig in, talk to you about what's going on with your referral program, help you diagnose some of the things that maybe you want to change or improve and provide some tactics and uh, uh, next steps for growing your referrals. Um, with that, uh, we're gonna leave this page up while we go through some of the questions that came through. So Krista, if you wanna hop back on and I'm gonna pull the chat up and see if sure. we have any questions that we need to get yeah. answered. Hey David, while you're looking at that, I, I can take one uh, that I saw come in. Well, a couple of questions uh, first. Yes, uh, for people who happen to join a couple minutes late, we will be sending out the recording and all these materials, so you will get that. Uh, there was a question that came in about uh, the generations and the age of people who are doing some job hopping. And uh, actually had this sort of my fingertips because I <laughs> it just came out or I looked at it recently. So this is a, a career builder study that was from a late 2021. Um, basically it showed, I think, which is, uh, not going to be a surprise that the younger generations tend to job hop a lot more than the older generations. Uh, of course, they have been in the job, uh, in the workforce for less time. So we're not sure how that's going to change over time. But right now, uh, baby boomers tend to have an average job tenure of a little over eight years. Gen X is a little over five years. And by the time you get to millennials and Gen Z, it's between two or three years. So these are the generations that are uh, moving most often. And you know, we've seen a lot coming out about the reasons. A lot of those reasons have to do certainly lately with you know higher salaries. They want more pay. Uh, remote work. People definitely want to keep their remote positions or get one if they don't have one. A general flexibility and work-life balance. And also the younger generations uh, really prioritize working for a company that matches with their values in a way that wasn't so important uh, previously. So those are just some of the factors we've seen lately. And David, I will uh, pass over to you for any questions you had over there. Yeah, and it looks like uh, multiple people ask questions about um, the recording. There will be a recording of this. People ask questions about the ebook. We will be distributing the ebook and an email follow-up based off of the number of questions around that. Um, and then I also see uh, some questions. Uh, is there a link for us to share with our ambassadors that they can post on LinkedIn or Facebook? Um, and there absolutely is. Uh, within our platform, uh, we do provide every single brand ambassador would get a unique link that would allow them to uh, share on Facebook, on Twitter, LinkedIn, however they would like. Um, this actually uh, a funny story about this, but it was a close friend of mine about four years ago. It's during the product testing days of the platform. Uh, she was an ER travel nurse and she was working for one of the staffing firms that was using our software. And uh, she took her unique link, posted it on Facebook. Another ER travel nurse came in through that link. Uh, and I was like, cool, you know, product's doing what it's supposed to do. But then I asked, why didn't you refer that person? There's a $500 bonus on the line. And uh, she said, she's like, I barely know that person. I, I, I only have her, I don't have her email address or phone number. We're just Facebook friends. And that made me realize that uh, by giving your ambassadors these unique links, you're actually able to activate and reach talent that you wouldn't have found otherwise. Um, I do see a question on what will be the cost for candidates. Um, we aren't actually, so our software is not delivering, there's no cost for uh, candidates to our platform. Our, when you work with us, you're actually buying software to manage and grow your referral program 
on your own. Um, so it's something that you would actually uh, be driving forward. Um, the cost for applicant or candidate then would just be tied to how much are you paying for referral bonuses, which again, we'd highly recommend that you are setting your referral program in a way that is profitable, that you're excited to pay out the referral bonuses, and that makes sense within the competitive landscape of what you're seeing in the marketplace. Um, also see a question about the tax blog article. Uh, we will be getting that out to you guys as well. Um, and charts as well. So we'll be sending out all of the content. I think um, yeah. one other question was just what, what results can we expect to see if we were to use your software? Um, I mentioned this earlier, um, but what most people tend to see is uh, a lift in referral placements anywhere from 20% uh, up to 250% um, organizations with a good reputation and leadership buy-in. Uh, we consistently are seeing 50 to 100% growth in referral placements. Uh, but it really depends on your organization, your reputation, and how you use the software. Um, again, we are, you know, we have the uh, all of the components of the software in place to drive it and make it successful. But it does come down to uh, how, what is your reputation, and and uh, how are you implementing it as well? David, I see a couple of those here. Just to make sure, um, someone asked uh, if most referral programs are just the internal employees can refer, or do we see? a lot of uh, agencies that are actually allowing anyone to refer and earn the bonus. What's your take on that? Yeah, so 90% um, of the staffing firms we work with are using us to find candidates. Um, we do have a small sec segment that are using internal referral program, using it for internal hires as well. We're actually doing a webinar uh, coming up here with a, a company called Salo, um, who's on Bullhorn and has used our uh, referral software for automation. They are using it for both the candidate side and they're also using it for internal hires. And I think uh, we'll be sharing more details about this, but what I heard from them uh, during some conversations recently is that they actually had so many internal applicants for one of their new jobs uh, that they actually had to turn it off. So it's something that can be used for both internal and external to drive uh, candidate flow. Let's see what else do we have? A couple more, I have one. Um... Someone asking about like for, for really large programs, say if you have more than 100,000 employees, uh, how many, uh, how big would the team need to be to like run the referral program? You know, how many people do you need to be effective? Yeah. So um, one of the things that's unique about uh, and this is going to be so dependent on your individual business processes. That's a little bit hard to answer. Uh, what I can tell you is the organizations that we work with, that are in the largest, you know, top five largest uh, staffing agencies. Um, they usually have one point person that works with our software um, where they're kind of managing at a high level. And then we allow campaigns to be managed on the individual branch level. So we're actually giving kind of the distributed ownership of the program um, and allowing people to manage it down to the uh, branch level. Uh, we do try to automate as much of it as we can and take uh, the workload off of the recruiters. Um, so it's, it's, I don't have a specific answer on how many people it takes. Um, I can tell you that the large organization, we're working with one person, and I would say it's no more than you know 10 to 20 percent of their job. Uh, we will be attending uh, SA Exec Forum, so I won't be there, but David and some other members of our team for, for the person who asked that. So yes, stop in the booth. Oh, and I, I do see another one. Uh, why don't you work with Exec Search? What are the main reasons that keep you away? Uh, we are not keeping ourselves away. Um, I do believe there's probably a model there. Uh, what I would say is that um, we tend to see uh, better results when it has a higher volume. If you're only placing, you know, one to two or three people a year, um, this might be more power than you need for that volume of referral placements. Um, that said, I do think there's a, an avenue for it. Uh, and it could be something where you could build a marketplace. We just have found that the companies that have the most success with us tend to be in the higher volume. Uh, you know, I could be engineering, uh, contract to hire, light industrial, healthcare. Um, that said, I don't think it's necessarily something that wouldn't work. It's just something that we haven't had customers come in and, and uh, really drive forward at this point. Mm -hmm. and and David, we also have a, a question from a, a current user who is uh, you know, looking for some ideas about getting more engagement from ambassadors and specifically asking about quarterly contests or some other fun things. So you want to... Uh, yeah, uh, what I can just share is that a couple, we have one, one agency that's been with us for four or five years now that has 
I, I think they're consistently running quarterly contests where they are coming up with something fun that's exciting for everybody involved. Um, they've done, uh, you know, destinations where they give travel giveaways, um, gift cards, uh, where they, you know, large gift cards. Um, but thinking about things that you know your audience is going to like. And then uh, what we've actually seen is, well, they'll say, for every referral lead you submit, you will get one entry into a raffle. Um, so that's one way to do it. We've also had people who said, just say straightforward, how, whoever gets the most referral placements over this period of time will get this additional bonus uh, or will get this award. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to do it, um, but it's something that can be meaningful in terms of driving additional interactions with, with the program. All right. Um, I know we are about five minutes out. I think we've got through all of the questions that we have today. I uh, just want to say thank you again for joining. I uh, really appreciate this. And also just let you know that this is the first in the series of three. Uh, we will be sending out emails on the, the next webinars. Uh, and we really hope that this was valuable for all of you. And for any of you that are going to be at Exec Forum, uh, stop by our booth and say hi. We'd love to, we'd love to talk to you and connect.